Well, turn to someone today and let them know it's so good to see them here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So good to be in the house of the Lord today. So good. Isn't God good? We're so blessed. God is so good. Thank you for our team leading us into the presence of God. He is here. He's in our midst. The Bible says where two or three are gathered, there he is in the midst. As we complete spring break this week, I know we have families traveling, but we're glad that you are here. I just want to talk just for a moment. Our ushers are going to receive our tithe and our offering. You can text the word GIVE to 84321. I know many of you are already connected that way, and thank you for your generosity. Our food pantry fed 251 families last month. Isn't that awesome that we were able to be a lighthouse into our community and make a difference right here in our city? We're seeing people saved every week, people making commitments to Christ. And I just want real quick before we receive our tithe and offering, just want to encourage you. I know people are talking about the eclipse tomorrow, and I shared in our Facebook group. If you're not on there, see me and we'll add you to it. But the Bible says don't worry about tomorrow. Let me understand that. And uh, for us, when we do worry, it doesn't change anything. And we can trust God even in the midst of things we don't understand. There's an eclipse every 18 months. And I think the last one was about seven or eight years here in America, and we survived. I grew up, and we survived Y2K. How many remember Y2K? You know, and we stockpiled food and water because the computers were, uh, we didn't know what they were going to do, whether they were going to reset, and we were going to lose all access to, to everything that we had. But we survived that, and I believe God's going to be with us this week. And there's TV preachers that make a big deal out of this and try to frighten us to sell books and to sell you know, food supplies, but we don't have to live in fear, amen? If you want to be prepared and get gas and get groceries, that would be great. But don't panic, don't live in fear, but have faith in God, amen? Praise God. Uh, you ready? Our ushers are going to be receiving our tithe and offering here in just a few moments. There's several ways you can give. You can text any amount that you want to give to 84321. There's also envelopes in the seats in front of you. So that's another way that you can give. But God is so good. I'm so excited for what he's doing at Good Shepherd. He's up to some great things here. So I'm so glad that you are a part of that today. Listen, Pastor is going to be starting a new sermon series next Sunday called Mind Your Business. And so I'm really excited about this new sermon series. I can't wait to see what it entails, especially just the title of Mind Your Business. And it's going to be really, really good. You know, there's uh, the enemy loves to come and have a battle in our mind, and we've got to overcome that battle. And so please come, be prepared for that new sermon series. God's going to do something great. And then also we've got our Bible study on Wednesday nights. Our prayer starts at 6, and Bible study small group starts at 6.30. We've been going through a Bible study by Christine Kane. Don't look back, and it's been wonderful. So just another way to connect in the middle of the week. So if our ushers are ready, we're going to go ahead and pray over our offering. Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing in this place today. And I thank you that we can extend our worship into our giving today. You've been so faithful to us. We've never done without. You've always been on time. You've always provided. So, Lord, I pray that you would bless everyone in this place and this offering. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. glad to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, there's nothing like coming to the house of the Lord, coming and getting in His presence, allowing His Spirit to move in your life, allowing His healing touch to touch you, allowing, you know, as I said, allowing you have to allow Him to move in your life. You have to allow Him to flow and, 
and do all those things in your life. But you know he's worthy. How many knows he's worthy? I got a lot of head nodding. He's worthy. And when you can see how worthy he is and just worship him. We're going to sing one more song this morning. He's worthy of it all. Because if it wasn't for him who went to Calvary, we wouldn't be here right now. If it wasn't for him who decided to die, shed all of his blood for the remission of our sins, to do all those things for us, we wouldn't be here today. And that's why it's so important when you come into the house of God to come with an expectation of his presence, an expectation of who he is in your life, an expectation of healing an expectation of provision, an expectation of, you know, whatever it may be that you have need of in your life, you have to have an expectation of that. If you're going to go to Texas Roadhouse, you're expecting to get something to eat. Amen. If you're going to a, a basketball game, you're expecting to be entertained. If you're, if you're going, I mean, it, it's one of those things. We have expect, when you go to the doctor because you're sick, you expect to get better. Yet it seems that sometimes we come to the house of God without an expectation of getting anything. It's just one of those things we do. It's just one of those things that's part of our week. It's Sunday. We go to church. But if you had an expectation, if you got excited on Monday for what was going to happen on Sunday. That would be something. We're just going to do the chorus. We're not going to do the verse. You want to go ahead and start? You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. For from you are all things, to you are all things, you deserve the glory. Hallelujah. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. For from you Father God, you deserve the glory. 
only you. We can do anything as long as you are a part of it. But without you, we can do nothing. And Lord, we thank you this morning and we praise you. We glorify your name. That you are still King of kings, Lord of lords, Prince of peace, great I am, mighty God. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Jehovah Shalom, our, our peace. And we give you praise. And we give you glory. And we give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Somebody give him a hand clap of praise this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, it's always good to be able to bring the word. Thank Pastor Josh for another opportunity to do that this morning. And, and you know, we, we've got to have faith. I got one amen. We've got to have faith. Because we've, we've got to, well, number one, 11, Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. You know, there's a, a, a you, some people call it a movement, a word of faith movement. You had to get saved by faith. So it doesn't matter what you believe of the Word of Faith movement or this movement or the prosperity movement or all these different movements, you've got to have faith in God. You've got to have faith in something you can't see, feel, touch, taste, hear. You've got to have faith. But what kind of faith do you have to have? I, you know, we've, and, and pastors probably seen this too. People come up and say, you need to pray for me that I have more faith. Faith don't come by praying. I can't pray for you to have more faith. I can't pray for you to, to be stronger in the Lord. I can't pray for you to do anything. All I can do is say that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So as you listen this morning to the Word of God, faith is being sent out to you that you can believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord of your life. But that's the faith that you're going to get by what? By hearing the Word of God. But dude, there's so much... People just go around saying, well, I don't have enough faith. I don't have enough this. I don't have enough. You know, sometimes it's just using what you got. If you'll put that picture up there, if, if it came through. Faith as a grain of mustard seed. Have you ever seen a mustard seed? Just a little bitty, little bitty thing. But it's faith as a grain of mustard seed. Jesus said, you know, the disciples came up to him one time and, and Jesus had cast out a demon and all this different stuff. And the disciples says, why couldn't we do that? And Jesus said in Matthew 17, 20, because of your little faith. Because of your little faith. For truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. Faith is a grain of mustard seed. Just this little bitty faith thing. It's just a little bitty seed. T.D. Jakes one time, he had this brand new building in, in Dallas, Texas and he hadn't been in there very long and he was preaching on the mustard seed kind of faith and he brought out a wheelbarrow of mustard seed. And he began to grab handfuls of it. I'd say they're probably still finding mustard seed in the seats and the floor because he, he wanted to get it across to people that it doesn't take just this giant faith to move mountains. It takes faith as a grain of a mustard seed to be able to do that. But it's a measure of faith that you have because you trust that God can do anything. I love that song. I trust in God. We've got to have that trust in God, but we've got to have a measure of faith. Romans 12, 3 says this. It says, by, For by grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgments, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. That's in the, in the English Standard Version. The King James Version at the end says, According as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. He's dealt to every man, every, every, every means you, 
Every doesn't discount anybody that's in here. Every means you. That at every one can get have a, has a not not can get. If you're a child of God this morning, you have a measure of faith. That word measure means this: to ascertain the size, amount, or degree of something, to estimate or assess the extent, the quality, the value, or effect of something. A measure. How many cook in here? You get a measuring cup. Amen? Some people do. I love chili. My, my mother-in-law made the best chili. So I asked her how to make it one day. And she told me, and she started saying, I put a little bit of this in there. I said, what do you mean by a little bit? Tea, tablespoon, teaspoon. She said, well, I put it in the palm of my hand. And I just throw it in. Then I put a pinch of this. And I said, well, how much is a pinch? I, I'm, I'm going tablespoon, teaspoon, half teaspoon. She goes, it's just a pinch, Trent. I, I, just, I just put just a pinch in there. And I said, but my palm's bigger than your palm. And, and she goes, well, I understand that, but that's all I put in there is a palm full. So different people's measure is, is different. And, and I finally just figured out, you go, go get a packet of chili mix, and it says it's a perfect amount. There's always a way around it. But I'm going to show you in Scripture, you know, just, just a few people that had different measures of faith. Sometimes we think we talk about these things, but you can't show me Scripture that, that it's this or it's that. And, and I had a, a picture of a bunch of bulldozers, and I had different sized bulldozers. Had a little bitty bulldozer. Had a medium size. There you go, see? I had a little medium-sized bulldozer. Had all these different things. And each one of those will move something. But what is it that you need moved? Some people may need a molehill kind of faith. You know, molehills are funny. You know, when I delivered mail, I would find a molehill, and I would just kind of walk on it. And one day it went, Eek! and I thought, well, I got him. But you might need a bigger one to move a bigger mountain in your life. But it's all in, in the size of the, uh, of, the, of the measure that you have inside of you because it's not about how much, it's about using what you've got. When you go to the gym and you start working out, you, you don't go in and put four plates on the bench press and go over there and just lay down and pull it off of you. Number one, you probably can't pull it off of you. Number two, if you could pull it off of you, you're going to kill yourself because it's going to smash your chest. But you sometimes have to go in and just start with the bar. I listened to a preacher, and he said he started working out, and he's a little skinny guy, and, and he said he went in there, and the trainer got him these purple six-pound weights. Grown man. Purple, six-pound weights. And he said he's sitting there lifting it like this, and he looked over, and there was a lady sitting over there in a, in a chair, and she had oxygen on her nose, and she's doing the same type of weights, and she kind of looks at him and just goes. But you have to start somewhere. And you have to begin to do it. But, but let's, look at it. let's look at a few of these. The widow's might, Luke 21, 1 through 4, says, Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box. He saw a, a poor widow put in two small copper coins. And he said, Truly I tell you, this widow has put in more than all of them, for they all contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty put in all that she had to live on. She put in all that she had to live on. She had some big faith. Or she had a desperate faith to put in all that she had to believe that she could get more. To put all that she had to believe that God could bless it. To put all that she had to believe that God was going to do something in her life. They never talk about her anymore, but I want to see her in heaven to see what did God do after you put that in there. He wouldn't have talked about it if he hadn't done something great for her. He wouldn't have done it. And you might say she had big faith or desperate faith. She only had two mites. That won't buy much, but given to God, it can buy anything. Amen. 
She had, she had a great faith. She had big faith to believe. She only had a little bit. But she said, this ain't going to do nothing for me. Let's just give it to God. Sometimes we look at our, at our situations and we don't understand that sometimes when you give to God, He's going to give back to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together. But it may not come how you want it to come. You may not go to the doctor. Your car may not break down. It's expenses that you usually have all the time just all of a sudden get fixed. All of a sudden something just comes up. All of a sudden something just you know, meets the need when the need needs to be met. Sometimes we just got to trust God. But then you got the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5. And we all know that story. If you don't, Mark chapter 5. Go look at it. Read the whole chapter. It's good for you. But this woman had a, a discharge of blood for years. She went to the doctor for 12 years trying to get this thing fixed. She went and she, she spent every cent that she had. But then she heard something. She heard about Jesus. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the... It doesn't matter what, 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 what we're thinking about. It doesn't matter that, that, that it's, it's just a story that somebody tells or something about. But he, she heard that Jesus was healing people. She heard... She probably didn't hear the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, you got to come to church and you got to hear the true gospel of... you, you got to watch YouTube. you got to do all... She just heard people getting healed and she'd been sick for 12 years. And she said, you know what? I don't even have to get to that man. All i got to do is touch the hem of his garment she had to speak it out of her mouth she couldn't just think it I heard there's one version of the Bible that says she thought in her mind that's not what the Bible says the Bible says in Mark 11 you say it and she spoke it and she said if I can but touch the hem of his garment she had the faith to believe it was a desperate faith because this is her last hope She had a hope to believe that she could be healed if she just touched a piece of cloth. But it was on the man. But then she gets there. How much faith did she have to have when there's a crowd all around him and she couldn't do nothing but really crawl? But she got through the crowd and she just reached out as far as she could and just said, I think she was probably tired, brother. I, I think she was probably weak from even getting there, weak from pushing through the crowd, weak from doing all this stuff. But she thought, if I can just touch it. And she touches it, and she's healed. And Jesus goes, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Somebody touched me. And the disciples look at him like he's crazy and said, there's thousands of people around you. Everybody's touching you. He goes, no, somebody touched me because virtue came out of my body. Power came out of my body, and she turned around. She confessed it with her desperate faith. And what did he say? Woman, your faith has made you whole. She had desperation faith. That's all she needed. But she heard. A lot of these people I'm talking about, they don't even talk about her, them having a relationship with Jesus or ever meeting Jesus or ever going to a meeting or ever anything. So I believe a lot of these people that, are, that we're talking about in here ended up having faith by hearing somebody else. It's so important that you tell people about Jesus. It's so important that you tell people about what you're doing, what God's doing in your life, how God's blessed you. I mean, it's not much, but during the 21-day fast, I was praying for a raise. I get a raise every year. It goes from 2%, 2 percent, two and a half, three, to 4, all this different stuff. And, and it, it was one of those years that the office did okay, so we were gonna get a, I was going to get a 2.5% raise. And I, it was 21-day fast. I was saying, I was just confessing, God, raise on my income. And so the raise came out, and I'd already calculated what the raise was going to be, getting my budget together and everything, and I'm sitting there, and I'm calculating, and I'm like, wait a minute, there's more money there. So I started calculating, and I started going through it, and it was a 4% raise. So I didn't want to tell nobody, you know, other offices that I knew were only going to get a two and a half that I got a four. So I, I, I emailed one of my buddies, and I said, Hey, did you get your two and a half today? And he goes, Hey, me and John got four. So it didn't just bless me. It's, it blessed everybody that got the 4% raise. 
Sometimes it just, it's a, it just ricochets off onto other people because you got blessed by God. And I told him, I said, well, I don't know why, but I said, I know for the last 21 days I've been praying and I've been fasting that I would get a raise and I got it. And he said, thank you very much. I mean, we've got to begin to thank God and just begin to praise Him. But then there's a man and his son in Mark 9. I'm not going to read the whole scriptures because I haven't even got to where I really want to preach this morning. But the disciples, the guy brought his son to the disciples in Mark chapter 9 to heal their son. He would fall on the ground and he would convulse and he would roll into the water. He would roll into the fire. He would do all these different things. And, and, and the disciples tried to pray for him and they, they couldn't do anything with him. So Jesus walked up and said, hey, what's going on? And he just, you know, I don't know if he had an attitude, but I kind of think he might have had an attitude. Hey, my son needs to be healed. I brought him to your guys, and they couldn't do it. But he looked at Jesus, and he goes, If you can, could you heal my son? And Jesus said, If I can. He said, If thou only believe. And this guy said this words, I believe, but help my unbelief. He had little faith. Little faith. What did Jesus do? Jesus said, how long has he had this? And he told him how long he had it. And he said, be done, it's healed. He healed him right there. Why? The guy had little faith. He could have said, well, I need you to go get on YouTube and I need you to start watching some ministers and I need you to start building your faith up. I need you to go over to the synagogue. Well, he probably didn't need to go to the synagogue. Pharisees and Sadducees didn't even believe in Jesus. So I need you to go listen to this one and go listen to that one and get your faith built up. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. I need you to build your faith and then I'll be back for your son. No. He said, be gone. And that was it. The guy was right in his own mind. Disciples asked him again, and this is, you know, a, a, the, the same account. They said, why couldn't we do this? He said, because you don't have enough faith. He's telling them they don't have enough, but he's, then he says, all you need is a mustard grain seed. So he's saying they don't even have mustard grain seed of faith to cast out a demon in a guy. But he gave us the ability. That when you hear the word of God, your faith ought to already be built up this morning. You've heard enough word from, from, the, from worship and enough word already this morning in the first 15 minutes that, and, that to, to start building your faith in anything else. But then he heals a paralytic. And this isn't even the paralytic's faith. Jesus, I, I, I've never read this really. I've read it many, many, many times, but I didn't know that they went to Jesus' home. It says Jesus was at home. It was reported he was at home. And all these people show up. He didn't go, turn the lights out. Let's act like we're not here. Anybody? Y'all lying? You, you tell somebody hadn't pulled in. You, you, know, you knew that you didn't want them to come in your house. You knew they wouldn't leave till midnight. Turn the lights out. All right. We'll, we'll have a repentance here at the end. But he began to preach and he began to teach and the house filled up with people and these four guys brought their paralytic friend to see Jesus, to be healed. Yet they couldn't get in. So they went up on the roof and they took the roof off. Jesus didn't go, it's supposed to rain tonight, what are you doing? They lowered him down. And it didn't say he saw the paralytic's faith. It said he saw their faith. They were determined. They were wanting, you know, I could just see it like this. They all went fishing all the time, but they couldn't get the guy in the wheelchair to go with them because he, he couldn't get in the boat. 
They wanted to go hunting, but they couldn't get him to go because he couldn't keep up when they were chasing down the deer. They, they wanted him to go to the ball game, but, but back then, you know, to the to, it's Coliseum back then, they had those big things. But, but they didn't have a handicap section for him to sit in. They wanted them, him to be a part of their life, and they were determined that if they could get him to Jesus, he would get healed and he could go do what they did. How determined are you when it comes to that? How determined are you to get to Jesus instead of getting to the doc? I'm not against doctors. They have a purpose. There's some good Christian ones out there that'll, that, 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 that you know, believe God and everything like that, but you, sometimes you got to go in there and they'll say something and you go, no, I, I don't receive that. Well, that's what it says. But yeah, but I'm trusting God. I heard a story of a lady that she had cancer and she had gone to a service and she got healed. It was in her back. Something was in her back and she didn't have three, three discs were damaged. She couldn't stand up hardly. She had to be on a walker. She got prayed for. She got healed. She got set free. She was leaving carrying her walker as she was running around the, running around the sanctuary and she was all excited. She went to the doctor, and the doctor did an MRI and saw three new discs, and he ordered a new MRI machine. True story, according to that preacher that's telling it. True story. Ordered a brand new. He said, you're going to have to come back. i got a new machine coming in. Something's wrong with this one. So he gets that other one in there, and he takes that MRI, and she can hear him in there cussing and ranting and raving because those three discs are still there. Sometimes you just got to prove them wrong. Amen. But it wasn't because of the guy. Not saying that guy didn't have faith in Jesus, but these four friends. Who's your friends? Roman centurion comes to Jesus for his servant. And he says, hey, if you could come, I, my, my servant's sick, and if you, I need you to come and heal him. Jesus said this. Jesus said, I'll come. Now, if Jesus was wanting to come to my house, of course, you got to call the daughters and tell them to clean up and get everything, put the dog away. That's why we don't want people to come, to our, pastor, to come to our house. That's why we don't want... But he said, no, I'm a man under authority. When I tell people to go, they go. When I tell people to come, they come. When I tell people to do, they do. I believe you can just speak the word. Jesus said, truly I tell you, no one in Israel have I found such faith. Truly in Israel I have not found such faith. Roman centurion. Not a Jew, not a Christian. And Jesus said he's got more faith than all the Jews and all the Christians. To be honest with you, there's a lot of people out in the world today that have more faith than most Christians. They may be faith for the wrong things, but they have, they have faith that stuff can happen. But sometimes it's what you say. It's sometimes in how you say it. It's sometimes in your attitude. It's sometimes in all these different things. It's, it's how, you, how you carry yourself. But, but you know, words will do a lot. Of for, words will do a lot. I've told this before. We had a guy at work. He's retired now. And he was about a year away from retirement. And he was... He was sitting there, and we had some subs come in to help us, and, and they were going to be able to, you know, they could be a regular if he was to leave, if they transferred into our office, and he was trying to get them to transfer because we didn't have any subs. And he said, hey, hey, girls, I'm just one heart procedure away from you having my route. I went, Shut up. He went, what? I said, you, you don't say that. They came back again, and he, he sat there, and he said, Hey, 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 girl, I, I'm just one heart procedure away from you having my route. 
And he just kept saying it. Until he had the heart procedure. And was out for four months. And I had to carry his route. Ended up having to get a defibrillator. Had AFib. Had all this stuff wrong with his heart because, you know, and, and he, already, he already had a little bit of AFib and stuff like that. But you began to speak things and you began to do things. So what if you, what if you said, by his stripes I'm healed every day? What if you woke up and just said, this is going to be a great day. My back's not going to hurt today. This is going to be a great day. I'm not going to have a migraine today. This is going to be a great day. I'm going to have more than enough today. This is going to be a great day. I mean, sometimes it's what you say and how you say it, but so too many people get up in the morning and they don't say, good morning, Lord. They say, good Lord, it's morning. Matthew 15 is a Canaanite woman. She was a Gentile. She wasn't supposed to even come to Jesus. But in Matthew 15, I'm going to read this, 21 through 28, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of, of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Why did she say, Thou son of David? She had heard about him. She had heard about him. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cry, cries after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent put to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now he's telling his disciples, I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Basically, I'm only sent to the Jews. But then she came and worshipped him saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said unto her, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. If pastor got up here and called you all a bunch of dogs, <laughs> well, I'm not coming back there. He called us dogs. What else is he going to do? Then we start making stuff up. Then we start saying, well, you know, I think it was a few months ago he called us something else. I can't remember what it was. He's just mean. But if you look at, if you look at the culture and the customs that they were in at that time, the Gentiles were called dogs. So it was custom to be called a dog, I guess, back then. You know, nowadays they say, what's up, dog? You know. <laughs> you know, we don't get mad when somebody does that, but, but you know, but Jesus called, what, what if he got up here and said, you, you uncircumcised brood of vipers? He just called us snakes. I've given to that church for... But then she didn't do that. But she said, truth. She basically said, you're, you're telling me the truth. But Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. I don't need the whole cake. Jesus, I, I don't need the whole cake. And he said, truly, you have great faith. Truly, you have great faith. This prayer that she did had ten things in it. And I'm going to go through them and, and just kind of let you see that Sometimes when we go to God, he, she could have stopped, said, he called me a dog. My daughter's just going to be vexed with a, with a demon forever. She could have left and been mad. She could have left and, 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 and tried to cuss them out. She could have done all these different things, but she stood her ground. But she had a prayer. This, this was her prayer. Number one, it was short. 
Sometimes we think we got to go to God with this elaborate prayer. Sometimes we got to think that, you know, pastor asks us to pray. He goes, oh, I don't pray. Sometimes just getting up and saying something short and sweet is good enough. But sometimes we think we have to have, to have this elaborate long prayer to get what the Word already says we have. Her prayer was short and to the point. My daughter's vexed. I need you to heal. That's how short. It was humble. When we go to God, we need to humble ourselves. Humbleness is a heart thing. Humbleness is something. Some think if we cry or we look pitiful, we are humble. But the word says in Matthew 18, Whoever therefore humbles himself as the little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Number three, she was fervent. The definition of fervent is displaying a passionate intensity. She definitely had that in her prayer. My daughter's sick. I need you to heal. Now. You have the right to say now when it says by his stripes you are healed. You have the right to say supply my need now when he says he'll supply your every need according to his riches and glory. You have the right when it's in the word when you pray that God now. There's so many places in the Bible that says now is the time. Now is the season. Now is. So now is supply my every need. Now is healing my body. Number four, it was desperate. She had heard about Jesus and that, that he healed people. Gentiles were not to come to a Jew for anything, but she knew Jesus was the only chance to see her daughter healed. Number five, she was rational. She knew Jesus was right according to customs by calling her a dog, but she knew that to get her daughter healed, she had to come with rationale of what she wanted. It's straightened to the point. You need to be specific. Or as Pastor Welsh used to say, Pacific. You come and you, this is what I want. We don't have to come, oh Lord God Almighty, Thou art. Jesus, I need healed today. Jesus, I need a provision today. Your word says, back it up. She was respectful. The way she talked to Jesus was respectful and to the point. She told him what he said was truth. She was respectful. What you're saying is the truth, but what I'm telling you is the truth too. My daughter's vexed with a demon, and I need her to be healed. This is how prayers should be. When I saw this, I was like, man, this is just awesome. She came worshiping him. She came and worshiped him. We need to include worship in our lives. It moves the heart of God more than we know. Valerie said it this morning. She said, worship is our warfare. You want to fight something? Worship. You want to go after the devil? Worship. He can't stand it. Why? Because he was a worshiper in heaven, and now he can't worship. You just find that song. This, that, that worthy of it all song just, just says it all. You want to get somewhere? Just, just find that song on YouTube. Push repeat and just go over and over and over. Find a song that, that, just, that just pierces your heart and it's going to pierce the heart of God as you use it and worship God. She came to him worshiping. That moved him. It was persevering. She persevered until she got what she came for. How many times do you pray for something and you quit? Right about the time it's going to get there. Coming with an expectancy. We sometimes, how many of us don't come with the attitude, with, with that kind of attitude when we come to the house of God? Just another service. It's just all it is. I'm going to go to church. We just need to get a time clock back here, Pastor. Yep, I got my time card, Jesus. When you stand before him, maybe you can show him how many times you went to church, how many times you did something, how many times you said a prayer, how many times you did this, how many times you did that. Sometimes, you, you know, I think sometimes we keep account of what we do to try to impress God, and God's only impressed by his worship. 
by our worship. We try to impress God that I read this many scriptures today and I read this many psalms today and I read this many proverbs today. I prayed this long today. I did all of these different things and Jesus is just saying, so what about your worship? You didn't worship me once. You didn't thank me for even getting up this morning. You didn't thank me that you had food on your table. You didn't thank me that you had gas in your car. You didn't even thank me for the job that you got. when we go to the doctor how many remembers the week before the Super Bowl Pastor Josh put a picture up there of people going to the Buffalo Bills football game and they refused to clean the stands so the fans just went over there and sat in the snow you want to know something they were expecting a good football game and those games last four hours in the cold, after a certain age, I went to a high school football game, and it started raining, and I went home. I like football, believe me. But I was sitting there, and I'm getting wet, and it was cold, and it was a high school that I never even went to. We lived in, we lived in Russell, and Raceland and Russell was playing, or Ashland and Russell was playing, and I was sitting there, and it started raining, and I said, this is stupid. And I went home. Them football fans don't. My brother, my brother-in-law, and his son went to the Green Bay Packers in January. It was forty-three below zero. They bought special clothes and special head stuff and special gloves and boots and all this stuff to go sit in a football game. My, yet, if church runs past a certain time, we think, "Oh my gosh, is he ever going to get done?" It's eleven forty. If you're taking medicine this morning. It's an expectancy. What did you come for? I come expecting for people to be healed. I come expecting for people to be saved. I come expecting for people to be have signs and wonders and miracles. I come expecting. I don't take this lightly. I don't dress up in a suit all the time. God says, wear a suit. And I was like, I don't have one that fits. That's why it's not buttoned. Why? It, because I want to give him my all. I want to give him the best that I have. I want to give him every ounce of energy that I have to preach the gospel. I don't have any type of, of, of anything but just excitement of who Jesus is and what he can do in your life if you will accept him and allow him to heal you, deliver you, and set you free. But you got to have some perseverance. you got to have some expectancy when you come in here. It's a breeding ground of miracles. And yes, if I go to a ball game, I scream a little. We had a lady in our church one time. She got kicked out of a ball game one time for yelling at the refs. Yet never yelled at me once in church. I said, come on. You can yell at them refs. Cheer me on. This is church. And? Coming in with expecting that I need a healing or have a specific need. I'm not leaving until I get it. No, we come just to get the obligation over. She knew what she wanted and wasn't leaving him until she got it. He said he called her a dog. Well, he don't want to pray for me or my daughter. I guess I'll just have to figure it out. Maybe I can find one of his disciples one day when they're walking down the road over around my neighborhood. and They'll, they'll come and pray for her. She said, nope. Yep, you're telling the truth. I'm a dog. But dogs eat from the crumbs of the children's bread. She was determined to answer, the Jesus, to answer Jesus the way that she did. She was determined that Jesus was the only answer to her daughter being healed. You know why there's so many miracles and signs and wonders in Africa? Because that's all they got. Well, we don't see those kind of miracles over here in America because we've got too many doctors, we got too many people that we got too much medicine on the on the shelves and the and we got too many stinking commercials. 
You can't even pronounce the medicine. Where do they come up with the names for these things, for, you know, for whatever it is that you have need of? And then you sit there and look at it, and it says, this may cause death. Well, I want to go buy that one. <laughs> but here's the measure of faith she had. She was full of faith. I believe she sat in her neighborhood, she sat in her home, she sat in the market or whatever, and she heard people talking about this Jesus that walked around and healed people. Miss Valerie, would you like to come, please? Why does she have that faith? Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. She had to have heard. She wouldn't have gone and sought Jesus out if she hadn't heard. You wouldn't be here if you hadn't heard of Jesus. If you're here for a pastor or you're here for a worship leader or you're here for, you know, if we have, you know, a Benny Hinn come in here and the house gets full, you know what, they're here for Benny Hinn. They're not here because Jesus is saying something. Not saying that Benny Hinn's got a bad ministry. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying sometimes we think we need to get to Benny Hinn to get healed when we really just need to get to Jesus. This woman says a lot about what we need in our lives, and that's just more of Jesus. I don't need more of this pastor or this evangelist or this minister. I need more of Jesus because when we get more of Jesus, we have all that we need. But we think we've got to get to a certain one. We were in a church one time, and, and, and praise God, we were praying for people. They were getting healed. And a, and a minister, one of the ministers in the church got up to preach, and, and he, he sat there, and he goes, Well, I'm not like Brother Trent. I don't see healings in my ministry. If you want him to pray for you, just come on up here. And I, I was like, It's not me. It's Jesus. It's coming. Yeah, yes. Have we laid hands on people and they've been healed? Yes. Have we been able to see things happen in our ministry because we've prayed for people and, and all this? We're vessels. Pastor and, and Josh and Beth are vessels. It's it's not them. It's 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 they're be, they've allowed themselves to be vessels of God. But the problem is, is we come in here this morning and we need a healing, and I'll have an altar call just here in a second for healings, and you'll sit in your seat. I, I don't think he meant me. But what is it you have need of? Did you come with faith believing this morning, or did you come just to, because it's Sunday morning and that's just what we do? Have you come this morning determined that you're going to leave different? If I don't challenge you, I feel like I've failed you. And that challenge is that you need to step out in faith and believe that God can do what He says He can do in His Bible. If you don't believe me, just open this Bible up. You need scriptures, you can come to me. You know, Sister Janice, you can come to Pastor Josh and Beth. We'll give you scriptures like crazy. You can be healed, you can be delivered, you can be set free. We'll give you scripture that says, They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You just believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Lord Jesus died, was risen again on the third day, he sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. But you have to believe it. Expectancy is the breeding ground for miracles. And sometimes it's a miracle that only Jesus can take care of. But the Bible says where two or three are gathered together in His name, asking anything, it can be done. God gave me one word that I can 
think of this past week. Who works on commission? Does anybody work on commission? Just one? God said your commissions are getting ready to skyrocket. You know, I told you months ago that what you do, there's an anointing on it. And what's going to happen is that anointing is going to begin to increase. That as much as you probably hate those phone calls that you have to do and you have to make 50 calls a day or whatever it is, 75 calls a day or so many a week, and, and most of the people just say, no, I'm not interested, and they're rude and everything, God's going to give you a way to jump to, to trump their rudeness. He's going to give you ideas. He's going to give you insights. He's going to give you things to be able to, to squeeze in that anointing that they feel comforted when you talk to them versus feeling threatened when you talk to them. And you watch, you're going to make more money this year, even after maternity leave, than you did last year, in Jesus' name. If you need healing this morning, let's just do this first. The Bible says that if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before the fathers. If you need to know Jesus as Lord of your life this morning, this is the day. You've gotten a faith message that you should be ready to go rush hell with a water pistol. You can run through a wall and jump over a troop instead of run through a troop and run over, jump over a wall. We were watching something the other night. It's, it's they go catch snakes in the Everglades. And there was this snake in this tree, and the guy's standing there. And, and I thought, I told Janice, I said, he's going to reach around, and he's going to grab that snake. He took off running, and I guess that tree was dead, and ran over that tree, knocked it to the ground, and then jumped up to catch the stupid snake. If somebody's that excited about catching a snake... How excited could you be that if you walked in here sick this morning, you walked in here limping this morning, your back hurts, your ears hurts, your head hurts, your blind eyes, if you maybe your eyes, you can't see. Somebody's cataracts are starting to build on your eyes. Ears are starting to ring or you can't hear out of that one ear. Why wouldn't you want to get healed this morning? I'm telling you, Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the one that, that can heal you wholly. And all, all, you know, all he asks, thank you. That's all, that's all he asks. He wants you to live for him and thank him. But if that's you this morning, I want you to come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.